Here we are today in Modica, southeastern Sicily, in the Temple of Joy, where the joy is created by expert ants inspired by an old tradition. This is the Antica Dolceria Bonaiuto, literally means old sweet house. Bonaiuto is the name of the ancestor that created this amazing adventure. And here we are to, today with this lovely young lady, which is the customer manager, Virginia. And I will ask Virginia a few more questions to know more about this joy tempo. Quanto tempo, ciao. Allora, Virginia speaks English, which makes everything more easy. So, can you tell us something about the company and how did you start, uh, etc. Of course. So the beginning of the history of Antica Dolceria Bonaiuto can be dated back in the 1880. The place where we are today is the Fattoio. Fattoio actually means frantoio, which is an Italian word which stands for um, the grinding place. So the place where people used to grind coconuts to create chocolate. Behind me, you will find metate. The metate is a really old stone which actually belonged to the Aztecs. Just imagine the Aztecs grinding raw coconuts uh, by having some charcoal just underneath, and then the cocoa paste, so created, would be mixed with chili and then everything diluted with water. And that's how cocoa started to be used. It used to be a really bitter drink, for which reason, when the Spanish people arrived in um, Mexico, when they tried the Aztec drink, they thought it was so bitter, so adding sugar was the best solution. Always with the same tool, cocoa nibs with sugar could actually make the first chocolate ever made. By grinding cocoa nibs and sugar on the stone, having just some charcoal underneath, the stone wouldn't get like too hot, which is the main reason why our chocolate is so um, gritty, so crispy in a way. As with the stone, the sugar doesn't melt, it doesn't dissolve, which is the main characteristic of our chocolate. So it tends to have a really different texture, a really different um, feeling as well. If you try this chocolate, you'll realize it's really rich in flavor, quite intense, as normally chocolate, when it's cooked at 80 degrees, for instance, it loses all the aromas, all the flavors cocoa has. So by doing this, by having the gritty texture, we can actually preserve the cocoa flavors. So you can tell if a cocoa comes from Colombia, from Venezuela. So single origin chocolate can be made by using this technique. Which arrived in Modica, thanks to the Spaniards. So the Spaniards, um, uh, well, Modica was actually a Spanish county when the Spanish people were already discovering America. So when they came back to Sicily, they would bring all the cocoa beans from Central America, from Mexico, and the metate. So the original metates used to be made with lava stone. The one you see here is made with limestone, so local hard stone, which is really resistant, especially to heat which is the main purpose. So heating the metate used to be essential. Today we've replaced the metate with all the different tools you find in our factory, especially with the stone mill. So today we actually grind cocoa nibs by using three different stones, which are already the mill. So the two stones will ground, will actually grind on a flat stone and the friction will make the temperature arise a little bit. If you want to get closer, you'll actually see how cocoa mass tends to be liquid. Well, it's not, well, when you find cocoa nibs, you'd expect finding cocoa powder, you know, if you think of seeds as something solid. Once you crush them, they don't really get powdery as there's fat, there's cocoa butter inside cocoa nibs. And by grinding and grinding for many, many hours, um, all the butter will melt and then you get cocoa paste but if you want to bring cocoa paste at its solid state 
uh, you just have to leave it at room temperature for a few hours and then it gets hard as a rock. I actually got this to show you. So that's pure real cocoa mass which is ready to become chocolate. Well, potentially you could temper these at 42 degrees, which is the average temperature the Mitate used to reach, and which is today reproduced with our tempering machine. So mixing these with sugar would make chocolate. That's fantastic, Virginia. Thank you so much. Grazie. Thank Wonderful you. Wonderful explanation. And uh, what are these? Are they cocoa seeds? Yes, so those are raw cocoa beans. Raw cocoa beans. So as soon as we get cocoa beans from Mexico, Colombia, Venezuela and Peru, the first thing we do is checking the quality. So we collect a sample from every cocoa bag. We place all the little seeds on one side of this tool, which is called guillotine. It works like a real guillotine, as we got a really sharp guillotine Amazing. which is going to slice oh, wow. the Amazing. sample we've selected in a half so that we can make sure there's no mold, humidity or you know anything which could affect the quality of the cocoa beans. It's been inspired by the French Revolution. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, nowadays which product? What different variety of products do you create? So in this factory we specialize in single origin cocoa beans. So we buy all the cocoa from Central America and South America, which means Mexico, Colombia, Venezuela and Peru. So we've selected different plantations and we do all the steps from scratch. So we buy raw cocoa beans, which we sort out um, on this tray. So we will remove everything which cannot be used and then we will go through all the different steps to create unique chocolate bars which we, um, whose beans we roasted. We also got another facility, so another factory, where we do um, all the other chocolate bars and chocolate related products. Which means like orange flavoured, chocolate bar, vanilla and cinnamon, chocolate railings and all sorts. What a wonderful mission you have for not only this lucky community but for the world audience. Yes. This is a fortune. Absolutely. Also because we are um, actually continuing the first chocolate tradition. So practically everyone in Europe was making chocolate the way we do. But then with time this chocolate has evolved. So everyone started to use higher temperatures and they would cook chocolate for longer. While our process is actually so simple and it only involves two ingredients as you don't need any emulsifier or extra ingredient to make sure the two ingredients, cocoa mass and sugar, can actually stick together as by using the cold process um, you create the structure of the chocolate. So it is quite a big mission, a big responsibility. <laughs> yes, I think you are doing wonderful things. Thank you so much. Virginia. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Um, so coca pods are original from Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Venezuela, well everywhere where you can find a tropical climate. So normally when coca pods are ripe, the workers of the plantation will harvest all the pods and then they will cut them open into halves so that they can extract the cocoa beans. And as soon as you open a cocoa pod, you realize it looks pretty much like that. So all the seeds are surprisingly white, as every seed is wrapped in a gelatin, mainly made with water and sugar. This kind of gelatin is also quite nutrient, as you can uh, dilute the gelatin with water and have a really energizing drink, which is quite popular for the native, like local, uh, people in Central and South America. When the cocoa pod is open, um, natural spontaneous fermentation will begin, um, which means all the good bacteria, let's say, which are in the oxygen, will attack the sugars in the pod. Normally, this is a spontaneous process, so no extra ingredient, no extra salt or anything, but all the beans will be moved inside fermentation tanks. 
some wooden boxes practically where they can ferment for like six or seven days. After all the beans will have fermented, all the beans will be moved outdoor for the drying. So they will sun dry for up to eight or ten days. And after that, they will be ready, safe to be shipped. And that's where our journey will begin. So as I mentioned before, we normally use the guillotine to test all the beans which arrive in Sicily. Um, normally we check only like 1% of each bag to make sure there's no mold, no fungus, you know, anything which could affect the quality. And after that, all the beans will be sorted and roasted in that oven I got just behind me. Normally that step is going to take 30-32 minutes at a temperature of like 120 degrees. Even though what's really special, what's really important is that we are not going to use the same roasting temperature for all the beans. There's not a universal recipe to roast cocoa beans as every variety, every region could actually require different temperatures or even a few minutes longer or a little bit less. Before we use the roasted cocoa beans, we are going to peel them, which means we remove the not edible part, which is the shell. So Luca is now showing how they still manually peel cocoa beans in some plantations. So they simply crack the cocoa bean open, that is the cocoa shell and that's the cocoa needs. Today obviously we got machines which actually peel all the beans in a more, you know, just fast and more efficient manner. The machine I'm talking about is the winnowing machine. Um, so from the top we are going to crack all the cocoa beans, you know, just to break all the shells. You'll see some bits kind of falling down the packer, so some pieces are much heavier, so they will just follow, you know, gravity and they will be contained in that silver tray. Some other small bits are going to be um, kind of flying away on the left, but in fact they are going to be vacuumed from the aspirator. So the white little thing at the bottom is going to suck all the shells to make sure there's no shells with the cocoa needs. We can activate the machine if you'd like to see how it works. So maybe from here you can have like a overview of everything. So you can infuse cocoa shells with hot water for a few minutes and then you get a cocoa drink. Mm. Normally we actually don't use that to make a cocoa infusion. We use cocoa nibs which are more tasty, you know, it's a really rich drink. And all the shells are actually given away to farmers, you know, for compost or as a fertilizer. So whatever is left, the cocoa nibs, uh, which is the first ingredient of our chocolate bars will be ground today with the stone meal originally on the metate. So that stone we saw at the beginning is the place where people would crush only the edible part of the cocoa nibs, so no shell was involved in the chocolate making process. And today cocoa nibs get um, ground first in the stone meal and then mixed with sugar. And we kind of try to make sure our cocoa mass and sugar never go above 
42-43 degrees. So now you'll see how we used to make our chocolate bars. Luca, our artisan, has mixed 50% cocomas and 50% sugar with a little pinch of cinnamon, which is our traditional chocolate. And then he's pouring the chocolate inside our traditional molds. So there's no other ingredient but cocoa mass, sugar and spices. So there's no water, no milk, no soy lecithin involved in this process. But before we can actually consider this chocolate ready, we will have to do one final step, which is called the shaking, la battitura. So now you'll see and hear the manual shaking, even though it's a little bit old fashioned. So normally that's not the way factories still do their chocolate bars, but you will see. how pretty it actually is and probably even more intense than any other chocolate as by using the cold tempering you actually preserve all the flavors all the natural aromas and you've got this kind of like side effect of the gritty chocolate bar which is not as smooth as any other chocolate oh, I I've got a quick question. When you infuse some orange or other flavour into the chocolate, does that affect the grittiness or the texture of that chocolate? No, well not really. So the grittiness and the texture are actually that grainy for the temperature we use. Which means uh, by working cocoa mass and sugar at 42 degrees, regardless of the flavour you actually put inside, it's still going to be as gritty as you've seen and as you'll taste. Um, also, we use a pretty small amount of spices, so if we add any cinnamon, it's just a little bit for you to enjoy all the chocolate flavors first, all the copper flavors first, and only afterwards you'll notice like the cinnamon or orange scent inside. So it's not overwhelming, it's quite balanced. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 